So, uh, this is the second, I guess, stream live that I've done, if anyone is tuning in. And uh, I guess we're going to go over to Trading View now. Now, this is the part where if uh, you're coming over from Instagram and um, you are, if you've been following me on Instagram, I've mentioned this in my stories about coming on to, to Trading View and just going over pairs, I guess. Um, just kind of what I see in the market and my potential setups that what I think uh, could happen. Again, I'm not a financial advisor and uh, I'm, I would never tell you guys to take any of my trades. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing in the market and what I would be possibly doing. Uh, I'm sure there's other uh, influencers out there that could be saying opposite things than me. Uh, but again, this is just something that you guys ask for and I like doing this. I mean, I'm on my computer all day. I do this all the time. I'm not really working right now, so I'm just really doing this full time. So I might as well show you guys or whoever decides to tune in and watch the stream. That's what I feel we're, we're gonna do here. I like to trade on, on, a, on a naked chart. I like to be a naked trader, so I don't like any indicators or uh, I just like to do price action, candle reading off the sessions here i like to use sessions because like in the red you, you aren't really supposed to trade the asian session uh and usually you're supposed to trade just in the white the white containers but again it's all based on speculation um if you if it's a good setup you should you should enter so uh, i'm just gonna turn that off uh, this other indicator i'm using is for inside bars um i use it quite a bit when i'm looking to enter you they're usually just points of interest as you can see they're always like kind of at the bottom like points of support or supply and demand again other topics that you know if you guys are interested we can go over i was always thinking like maybe even like going over or like reading a book like i have some like forex uh trading books that uh well here's one of them i really like this one this is what i'm reading the price action breakdown um and then i also got uh ah yeah this one naked forex really 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 good book as well but I was just thinking like, you know, maybe go over these books and then really like things that they teach in the book, like go and find them on TradingView and also the simulator that I'm using and like really, uh, you know, learning how to trade on the market. And, you know, so, so like everybody can get better. Now, I don't know if you're a trader already then good for you, but if there's people that are new and, you know, I'm always still learning, uh, if that's something uh, you guys want to do, I think, like I'm always doing it anyway, so uh, if that's something you guys would want to follow along, then I think that would be pretty cool. We got some we got some content that we can go over and really dissect and become a better trader. Um, but yeah, let's just go back to our our forex pairs here. This is your USD. I usually like to trade on the lower time frames, um, though. Scaling out to the higher time frames is always good too to see to overall what's happening in the market. Um, as you can see right now, it still looks like we're on an uptrend. Um, or maybe a downtrend if we go to the weekly or monthly. Yeah, okay, so on the monthly, we're. Uh, So we've broken low uh, on this support line right here. If we make some right here. And uh, as you can see, the, when the market has come down, it consolidated around here. Before uh, breaking back up and retesting this uh, which was once uh, support, which is now resistance. And it would have been a great trade to enter because uh, it is coming back and retesting this area and would have been a great sell. Um, and you could have gotten in like right here just to be safe. Obviously stop loss would be a little bigger here, but could have taken it down to again I always I don't know why but I always like these little inside bars I like to follow them 
it's always like I'm, even though they're like a little bit past the market they're always like good points on like usually where the market likes to like hang out so I could have stopped it right here as well as you can see like it's hit this area once twice three four times right so that's why I, I kind of like fall them. there's probably no like strategy behind that I just a pattern that like I've noticed so you know like that would have been a good trade right there like 11% that's a lot right we're on the monthly as you can see right but if we move down and um, yeah see if it went with these yellow candles again see comes up just a good point it would, it would have been a good entry there Again, we're, we're on the weekly, <clears throat> comes in, comes back. We have uh, either a head and shoulders or a double top here, if you'd like. So again, like, because it hasn't broken above here, we're still looking at the market to move down. Let's go to the daily. Yeah, it's a little bit more clear on the daily here. You can see that you could do a head and shoulders here. Right, you could do one with head. We didn't go all the way down there, but you know, we could see it move all the way down here to finish this, this head and shoulders pattern. And then if it does, uh, we could really see the market move. You know, we take it from the tie or from the head to the here and then we take another one right here that's usually the way that head and shoulders works so that's close enough so we could see the market actually come back to around this area right here especially when uh, the you know when there's usually gaps like this I feel like these gaps have to get filled I'm not really sure what the terminology is, but I do know that like usually these gaps like this have to be filled eventually. So the market may have to, it should have to come down here and like return to these areas to fill these gaps or not these gaps, well, these impulsive moves up. Uh, if we go down onto the four hour now, actually I'm gonna get rid of this head and shoulders now just to be a little bit easier for you guys. Um, as we're getting into the smaller time frames, like the four hour, as you can see, uh, the market has moved down. And when we zoom in, this head and shoulders now is there's a lot more candles, a lot more movement in the market and potential setups, uh, especially um, the way that the market's moving. I also love your USD because of these big moves that it does. So it, it leaves a lot of room for potential setups. Um, you know, the way that Euro USD is moving, and I believe this was caused last week when the news happened. That's where a lot of people that were using the bot got stuck. Uh, so, and it was a pretty big drop. It, it, it even affected me. Um, I had buys here, you know, but we literally went almost 2% down. Yeah, like 2% down, which is quite a bit. Um, but it is retracing. Uh, I know a lot of people that were in some of the pairs, like USDCAD, were recovered from, from this and uh, other pairs that got affected by the news. But uh, it seems like it, it's slowly making its way up. Um, but you know buy I'm not sure if buys would be the smartest idea just because we are we are moving down at the moment and until we see I guess a change of direction and I guess maybe back up to this area where this high we need to pass this high before uh, there's a real change in direction because right now anything that is below this we can still see the market move down and and obey the structure because higher high higher low higher high higher low higher high higher low and it just every time it keeps on breaking the last low anytime that it comes down 
go higher, 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 low. And then when this comes back up, because it hasn't broken that, this is where the new high is now. And then, uh, and then because it's breaking this low, this is the new low. And as you can see, it comes back up, but we want to make sure that when the market comes back up, that it's not passing this area right here, the highs, because if it was, then we would be breaking structure and we could be moving back up. So because it's not breaking this area right here, the market is going to go back down, as you can see, and then we can move our little line here, where again, it pulls back down. And as you can see, because it didn't break the higher highs, uh, the low high, the lower high, I think that's what it is. Again, like I'm new to this as well, guys. So like, I'm just getting used to this as well. Um, this is the new one. So then we would move the line here again, market came down and it hasn't broke above this area. So, you know, we could see the market move down even more. And especially after when we saw on the higher time frame, like I was saying before, it's like a nice head and shoulders pattern. There's one shoulder head and another shoulder. It's not the nicest head and shoulders, but uh, it is a head and shoulders nonetheless. And as time goes on, can we see it complete the pattern where it comes down to around this area right here? So um, if we go down to the hour now where things get a little bit more interesting. see you know if it could break past this point right here this would be a pretty again like it's building to changing a direction but until then like uh, as you can see it's still unsure of really I feel like there's a really like a battle going on in between this area and I think the market's gonna bounce around in this area quite a bit before we see it move or break below either here or up here, right? Um, now, as we get s smaller or lower in the time frames, and I feel like this is really kind of where like patterns start to kind of come into play, um, especially like retest, break and retests. So um, just like this area right here, these are our supply and demand areas, or these are these key levels that I was telling you in the higher time frames. Like if it the market breaks above this area, we are starting to uh, it's like laying down the road work to a change of direction where the market could be going back up. But until then, as you know, on the higher time frames, we're coming down right now. So um, I think it's good to be looking for sells. And uh, I mean, I guess you could do buys, but I think it's better to always go with the go with the trend. I know some people always say that, always go with the trend. But I mean, if everybody's saying it, there must be a reason why. And I think it's good to respect that. I usually like to use the rectangle boxes just cause I don't know, it's a lot better. You can like really see where like the last supply and demand areas were. As you can see, like the market was ranging right here. So uh, you know, a lot of trading was happening in these areas and see the market likes to come down into these areas where, uh, you know, a lot of trading has happened before. And, um, you know, it hangs out around this area. See, like even these candles right here, you see, like it kind of, which was once uh, resistance is now support and it's bouncing off of it a lot, potential trades here change the color of that to like orange I guess or red yeah red red's better you know another one uh, potential here right and again like on the smaller time frames these could be actually good setups because uh, we're, we're only on the fifth we're only the 30 right so um, as we get smaller, these are these areas that we're gonna keep be looking for. And I mean, look, this is a nice, this is a nice hammer, right here. Again, uh, candlestick analysis. 
if you know how to read candlesticks, it's so much faster than indicators, so much faster than anything else, reading what's happening in the candle. And as you get s smaller and smaller into the time frames, really seeing what's happening in the market. Uh, so I think that, that that's uh, really important. But again, like even on the on the small time frame like this, we see a nice head and shoulders pattern, right? See, and so this right here, if this, whoops, sorry, if this completes, I feel like the market should go down, and if it does go down. I, uh, you know, we could see it move into this area right here. Right around here, right? Um, I feel like that, that, that could be a good, a good trade here. I mean, obviously we would need more confirmation and I think that that's really important because it's never good to just blindly enter into the market. Um, Go down to the five minute now. Uh, where you know these are these potential setups that I said before when looking on the higher time frame, but as you can see right here, we had a nice oops, we had a nice little downtrend that was going down like that, and then as you can see it broke. It broke the structure because if it was going to go down, remember, like I was telling you before, the higher high for it to be a, a lower low and the higher a higher low, it can't break the last higher high. So as you can see right here, it broke structure right here from this area to here. And I mark these. Sorry, but if my neck is a change of direction. Zoom in here, because now we're on the five minute. A nice little change of direction here, and um, you know, now this area right here is each one is a supply and demand area. And so, and if we go smaller, like watch this, down to the three minute. Right, and so you would have your supply and demand areas, which are always these higher highs and lower low, and higher highs and higher lows, right? Where the market has consolidated a little bit, even if it's just, I mean, again, if we go down onto the smaller time frame, like the minute, whoops, my bad. Here we go, right here. These are, these are areas, supply and demand areas, right? There's one right here, one right here. This is a little tiny one here, I guess. This is one right here, see? Combine that one together, right? So, uh, but because it broke structure here, and this was the last higher high, and this is a nice consolidated area right here. Again, if we went even on smaller time frame, we could see more candles here, and it would be a range, right? This is where a range of candles are, where the price is consolidated. And so after it's broken structure, and it's coming back to, uh, it's coming back and retesting this area. I think it's always better for the retest, because then at least you know that uh, you know the market has come back it's retested this area and then it can it can move up from there um, it's it's always kind of like a, like how can I explain a retest in like a cool way retest is kind of like checking over your shoulder when you're driving like you could just in like a date let's okay now this okay so we're gonna blow it up like so say you're in like a kind of like a like a risky situation. Okay, so let's say you're like you're you're like a NASCAR driver or whatever, and so you, you gotta like switch into lanes. Now you could be bold and just switch into the lane, right? And uh, or 
you could like look over your shoulder and make sure that everything was all good and then switch lanes kind of a bad example i think but uh you know i think it's just kind of like looking to make sure that uh you know the market is going to go there so it's coming back and respecting this area and uh, then whoops just lost me and then and then moving up so uh this would have been a good little trade here where you could you could have gone long on uh when the market came back and like retested in this area anywhere in this area i'd, I'd say I'd probably wait probably enter in like right here and then uh, i like to do like five And then, um, yeah, that's a nice little, that's a nice trade, especially uh, where again, like we're we're on this lower time frame, and you know, there's a range here. These supply and demand areas are good areas for the market to respect. So, as you can see, like you probably could have had a TP right here because the market could have stopped in this area. Uh, but it didn't, it blasted up, or you take, could have taken partials. Um, and uh, just in case, you know, the market decided to come down right away if it wanted to respect this area, but no, it decided to come up to the next, the next zone up, respected it, came back down. And again, like if you, if you understood what you were doing or, uh, you know, you understand that you know, this is kind of like a resistance. You could have entered into here as well as the, you know, the market bounced off this area uh, and came down. And again, you you could have made a nice little, nice little profit here. But I think overall, I think we're, we're really waiting for the market to come down, back down into this area. Um, you know, it looks like a, a falling wedge is starting to, or a wedge or a triangle or whatever you want to call it is starting to form um you know we got our support right here where the market has bounced off of it a few times and then you know right because and it's kind of respected this area see it's hit it once or in close once hits twice three times and um again it's respected this area as well uh you can, you can maybe move it down by the wick but um depending on what we see here, um, we would want a break. And just like before, we always want to retest. Break and retest. Maybe, and it, it could be anywhere in, in this area right here. And then, you know, either back up here, because this is where our last uh, supply and demand area is and uh, you know then it could come down or we could actually see the head and shoulders pattern actually starting to complete where it breaks and then retests because uh, again we always like to retest it's just a lot safer to enter into the market and then down so uh, depending on what happens uh, in the next uh, bunch of hours, um, but right now the market moves pretty pretty slow. So I think it's just going to range here, uh, as you can see, it's respecting this this triangle pattern, and uh, I think we could we can definitely see either a break and retest and move up to the higher highs here before moving down again, or we could see it break below, retest uh, again, and then move down and start completing this head and shoulders pattern that uh, pretty much goes all the way up to the four hour, right? I mean, one, an arm or a shoulder, a head, another shoulder, and uh, you know, we're breaking down, right? So um, I, it's a pretty good indication that the market could be coming down. Again, we're not too sure. And you know, we do have this area right up here that the market could come up and then move down again so we could see the market move up from here to move up into this area but um again we need to wait to see what happens down on the lower time frames 
to really have a better understanding of really where the market is going to go right now. As you can see, it's this time right now, especially if we do the sessions, like we're we're in the red area right now. So usually means the market moves pretty slow. As you can see, a lot of indecision and uh, not a lot of movement compared to uh, you know if you go to the 15 minute and we we kind of go back over to when uh, you know. The market was actually making some moves for in the morning in the earlier sessions new york and london session i think that's it guys um i i think i spent a lot of time on your usd just breaking it down all the way from the higher time frames until the lower time frame um my opinion is i wouldn't get into the market right now just because it is in this triangle pattern it is ranging right now and until we see a, a real break of structure out of this triangle and then either a retest or an impulsive move up, um, I think it's just better to sit and wait. Better sit and wait. Go sip on some lemonade. It's nice and hot outside. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, I think uh, I, th I think that's it for today. I mean, I could go over the simulator. I'm not sure if that's really a, a good idea. I think it's better to just keep this a little short. Uh, there's no one actually in the stream right now, but uh, that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm gonna continue to make these videos. I think they're, they're, they're gonna be fun more often and I'll definitely structure them a little bit better, a little bit more professional. I know a lot of people have like these like things on the side with your social media platforms and you know you got the screen in the middle and I'll figure that out okay but right now we're just looking at charts man I'm just like if you guys weren't here I'd be doing this anyways right so um, appreciate anybody that did watch and thank you so much guys be sure to like and subscribe